All right, and here we are in RL time constant circuits. Um, these should be fairly familiar. The only thing that's really going to change for our RL time constants is one, um, the time constant formula is different, and two, um, like we talked in that first RC video, um, when you look at inductors, you are looking at a level of current because if you think about it, in inductors, it is current that is lagging, right? Eli, current is lagging. So we're looking at a level of current. Okay, let's start with our first question. How long will it take the inductor to fully denodrize? Now, this is a very familiar formula because um, we've done this question already in our RC uh, time constant circuits. So, um, using my different formula, I'm going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to take my TC1 for an RL circuit, which is L over R, and um, wait, we're going to talk just for a second. So again, inductors are the same as capacitors in this fashion. If both sides of the inductor is connected to the power supply, it is energizing. And if only one side of the inductor is connected to the power supply, then it is de-energizing. So if we are de-energizing, we are using our top path there, our R2 and our L, L1. All right, let's put those numbers in. So 250 milli for L1 divided by 15K, which is R2, gives us a time constant of 16.67 microseconds. All right, now it says fully de-energized. We, we know that fully for us is five time constants, so we're going to take time constant one and multiply it by five, and that gives us a value of 83.33 microseconds. So we know it takes 83.33 microseconds for the inductor to fully de-energize. Let's try another one. Um, and now we have what is the level of current through the inductor 150 microseconds after power is applied. So again, uh, multiple, multiple parts to our question. We have some clues in it after power is applied. So we are energizing, we will be using the upswing on our graph. Um, we've also been given an amount of time, 150 microseconds, but until we figure out what time constant one is, we are not going to know what 150 microseconds means. So we start there. Time constant one is going to be 250 milli divided by 5k, which is L over R for the portion of the circuit that is energizing and we get 50 microseconds. Now, of course, we are going to compare by taking 150 micro divided by 50 micro, and we find that we are at time constant three. Well, time constant three on our energizing path puts us at 95%, but remember, we're looking at a level of current. What is the level of current? So we need to know total current to find out a portion of current. So we're gonna start with that, we're gonna take our 50, which is our applied voltage, and divide it by the resistance in the operating portion of the circuit, which is 5K. Why don't we use the inductor, you ask? Well, that is for two reasons in this case, um, but typically it's just one. So first off, your inductor during these time periods are not fully operating, right? They are only at a portion of whatever they should be. So because they are not fully operating, we do not use them to determine um, current. Now, this also happens to be a DC circuit. And in a DC circuit, when an inductor is fully functioning, it acts like a short. So um, it would actually have no ohmic value for all intents and purposes in this DC circuit once it is functioning, once that time period has gone um, past five time constants. All right, so we are at 10 milliamps for total current. So if we are at 10 milliamps for total current and we are at time constant three, then we know that the current through our inductor at 150 microseconds is 10 milli multiplied by 95%, or if you're putting it into your calculator, 10 milli times 0.95. And that gives us 9.5 milliamps is the level of current through the inductor 150 microseconds after power is applied. 
All right, one more example. Now you'll notice in this one, we do not have a de-energized path. We have instead two energized paths. But the question is, is the energized time through R1 shorter, longer, or equal to the energized time through R2? The easiest way to determine this is to figure out the time constants for both paths. So we'll start with R2, and we do 222 milli divided by 20k, and we get 11.1 .1 microseconds. And then we do the path through R1. So 222 milli divided by 8k, we get 27.75 microseconds. Now comparing the two times, we see that the time through R1 is greater. So that means this is all time, so it's going to be longer, right? So if it's a bigger, um, the number is larger, then the time is longer. So the energized time through R1 is longer than the energized time through R2. We can figure this out without doing any math, just by understanding division problems. So if we have a numerator that is the same for both of our problems, it's the, de the denominator that determines the outcome. Now, obviously the two numbers are not the same, so they're not going to be equal. We can throw that one out right away. Now, the larger denominator is going to give us the smaller answer, and the smaller denominator is going to give us the larger answer. So if you know those about fractions, then you can determine, without doing the math, which one of the two paths will be longer and which one will be shorter. All right, and that is um, a few practice questions on RL time constant circuits. Next, we are going to look at transformers.